Hey, hey, party people. Isn't it about time I did a figure drawing video? It has been a minute. And I love doing these because I just love drawing. So let's do this. All right. In this video, I'm going to focus on drawing pairs. And with the information that I share with you in this video, you can draw three people, 17 people, 89 people, if you can fit them on a piece of paper. All right. And just a couple of disclaimers before we get started, okay? When I talk about bodies in these sort of beginner figure drawing videos, I am really generalizing, first of all. I'm not trying to create a beauty standard, okay? I find that for beginners, it is very helpful to get some basic good proportions and that people pr uh, practice these proportions before they start adding their own style, their own bodies. You know, you can start making curvier bodies, skinnier bodies, less muscular bodies, taller, you know, whatever you want. But this is a good kind of like base figure to get started. Okay, so I'm just generalizing like crazy. And I am drawing male female couples. Not to say that those are the only valid couples. I am very uh, pro everybody, but I'm drawing them because I wanted to draw both male and female figures. I wanted to talk about them both. So that's what I ended up doing. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's let's start drawing. Uh, the first part of this video, I'm gonna show you proportions for not elongated, but still somewhat fashionable figure bodies uh, that are realistic eight head figures straight on. The second part, I'm gonna do straight pose, elongated fashion figure proportions. And then in the last part of this video, I'm going to show you how I drew this couple, a more dynamic pose with overlapping bodies and whatnot. So let's start with the short people. These people are not that short. It's just that anytime I draw non-fashion elongated proportions, everyone on Instagram is like, oh my God, Zoe, their legs are so short. I'm like, no, no, I drew real people. Y'all need to calm down. <laughs> It's just, you know, I think people who are in fashion, fashion illustration, fashion design, we're so used to these elongated figures that regular human proportions drawn out in illustration, they just look really short. <laughs> when it comes to the drawing male, female, I find what helps is having the female figure have an ever so slightly smaller head. Okay, so if we have two figures and they're both approximately eight head figures, I would have the taller person, the guy in my example, to have a one and one eighth inch head and for the woman to have a one and one sixteenth inch head and draw the plumb lines with the head measurements marked out. Okay, and I use tracing paper and I draw the head number lines and then I flip the paper over so that I can erase and draw my figure without worrying about losing my number line, my plumb line. On this non-elongated figure, the breasts are going to sit in the center of the second head mark. And it might look a little bit high, but keep in mind that when I draw fashion figures, I draw them looking like they are wearing an invisible bra. Like they are lifted and separated in all their full glory. Because in general, most women wear bras under their clothes and I use these figures to put clothes on. So that's how I draw their breasts. And then the crotch is at the forehead mark, exactly in the middle of the body. The knees are just above the six head mark and the ankles are just under seven and a half heads. Waist is at three and so are the elbows. Wrists are at four right along the crotch line. And there you have it. Those are the basic proportions for a non-elongated female fashion figure. And I like this method of drawing lightly with a colored mechanical pencil and then finishing with a darker mechanical pencil. So there is your figure. 
Okay, so she does have nice proportions for fashion work. If you watch my interview with costume designer Shirley Zakovich, you know that costume designers do not use elongated figures. They draw figures that most closely resembles the actor who's going to wear that costume. So if they're 5'2", if they're 5'11", if they're 4'11", you know, you got to go with that. For men, okay, so we've marked each head increment as one and one eighth inch. And for the most part, men's shoulder widths, the furthest out, they're kind of like three heads wide. Does that make sense? Okay, so mark out the very far edge of their deltoids should be three heads across. And that shoulder line where their clavicle was sit would be at one and a half. Their waist is at three, much like the woman. And their crotch is also at four. Okay. Typically speaking, uh, men have waists. You know, their trunks taper to their waists. And then their hips generally kind of fall straight down as opposed to flare out. And they will typically have thighs that flare out unless they skip leg day. Gentlemen, do not skip leg day. While men's crotch ends at four, at the forehead mark, I do drop that V a little bit below to about four and a quarter to make room for men's anatomy. And that's what looks natural. Okay. And then the knees are just above the six head mark. And the ankles are just below the seven and a half head mark. Okay. And generally speaking, when I am drawing men, I do tend for a more angular line quality. When it comes to pecs on a man, I like to make sure that there's a double line so that you see the space, that flat space where the sternum is in between the pecs. Otherwise, it kind of looks like breasts. That's not a great look on most men. And when you are drawing kind of the armpit area, okay, this is how things get layered. Pecs are at the top, and then the biceps, if your arm is against your body, just hanging, your bicep will be behind your pecs, and then your lats, which are the muscles around your ribs, will be behind your bicep. So see how I layered pec, bicep, lats, like that, okay? Otherwise, things get look funny when they get layered wrong. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the elongated fashion figures. And again, for the male figure, I'm going to do one and one eighth inch head. And for the female, I'm going to do one and one sixteenth inch head. This time around, though, you know, the other figures, the shorter figures, they were both eight heads tall. When it comes to fashion figures for women, I like to do a 10 head figure. And for men, I like to do a nine and a half head figure. Most women, like in a fashion context, are wearing high heels. And so I put their ankles at the nine head mark and the toe at, right at the 10 line. And that's the length. That's how big your foot should be. With guys, most guys are in flats. And so you have a shorter foreshortened foot on the figure and so while their ankle is also at nine their foot is going to end at nine and a half okay now on the female figure for the elongated figure her breasts are going to sit not exactly on the two but the two head mark should hit right where like a strapless dress would sit like kind of the top quarter or third of the kind of the breast circle that I drew, okay, not the center like I drew on the other figure. Waist remains at three, and here the crotch is at four and a quarter. Knees are in the middle of six, not above the six, and ankles are 
at nine. And yes, if it seems like a lot of the elongation is in the calves and a little bit in the thighs and not very much at all in the torso, you are exactly correct. And that really relates to the design because you don't want to distort the torso too much because then the figure to flat translation is going to look super awkward. But with pant legs and skirts, if you just make them longer, you add drama and you add flair. But there's not, you know, if you draw pants, you don't draw a whole lot of design details at the hems of your pants or at the kneecaps of your pants. It's pretty rare. And so there's minimal design distortion while adding drama. Okay? And that's why the legs show the most elongation. Arms again, elbows are at three, wrists are at four and a quarter. Wrists should generally line up at crotch level which is also the widest part of your hips, and then hands. If you want more information on drawing legs, drawing anatomy, just drawing figures in general, I have a lot of in-depth fashion figure videos. You can watch my female fashion figures playlist. You can watch my male fashion figures playlist. You can watch my general figure drawing playlist. I have so many videos. This one is really just focusing on the different proportions and laying them out together, okay? But I will link all those figure drawing videos in the description box. I put related video content in the description box of every single one of my videos, just FYI. <laughs> yeah, I was really struggling with that leg there. <laughs> you know, people love these straight figures, but I don't because everything has to be perfectly symmetrical when you draw them. I'm like... I cannot be bothered with that. Like when I draw flats, I just flip it over and trace the other side to make it symmetrical. Or I just copy and fl uh, reflect in Illustrator. <laughs> so I'm like, symmetry, Ugh, such a chore. <laughs> so with men, again, I have marked the three head width for his shoulders. And again, his waist is at three. And that shoulder line is at the one and a half head mark. And his, the crotch is at four and a quarter. And we will drop that V to dip a little bit below. Men's knees are just, a just below the six head mark. And ankles are just above the nine head mark. Okay. You are shortening the legs just a little bit on men and kind of evening out the thigh to calf ratio a little bit. It looks a little bit more masculine that way. But arms remain the same, elbows at three, wrists lined up at crotch level, four and a quarter. There we go. The cut, the oblique cut, that should be about a third or halfway down the forearm if the guy's arm is relaxed at his sides, okay, somewhere around there. And don't be afraid to round out his thighs, you know, give him some extra muscle. Uh, I'm going to put my preferred anatomy text in the description box, but there are a lot of great anatomy books out there, you know, in general, even if people are not very muscular themselves, they'll show the most muscle tone in the legs because people walk more than they do any other physical activity, generally speaking. And so you really want to accentuate the shapes, the anatomy shapes of the legs, male and female, uh, more so than anything else. Okay, And there you have it. Those are your elongated fashion figure proportions male and female and now I'm going to draw this couple and I'm going to talk about a couple of things about addressing overlapping couples okay first of all the number one thing <laughs> is make sure you're getting your overlaps right I've seen this weird things in drawings I've seen weird photoshopping errors I it's 
it's not good, okay? This one is a very natural overlap. You know, her arm is behind the guy, but she's clearly got her forearm on his shoulder and her hand is up front, and that makes complete sense. But I've seen couples where, like, their arms are linked, and their arms are linked in a really weird way, and it doesn't make any physical sense. And look, if you don't have a picture to look from, but you want to draw two people with their arms linked, go ahead and grab a friend and look in the mirror, like take a little selfie of the two of you with your arms linked. So you make sure that your arms linked look like it's a physically possible thing to do. <laughs> and with feet, this is a big deal because when you're doing like um, these design projects, and you're doing the final page where you have like all these people lined up wearing your whole collection. And some people have their legs spread wide open. Some people have their legs crisscrossed like this girl here. Some people have their feet together. And I've seen some layouts where two feet would be inhabiting the same space. Like they're on top of each other. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you can't do that. You need to make sure one definitely looks like her foot is way behind the other girl's foot or way in front or just nudge them further apart so their feet are apart or even nudge them together so their legs cross and their feet cross. Okay. You must obey the laws of the physical universe when you draw people. If you are drawing, you know, science fiction, and I do have tons of non-fashion people watching my channel. Hello, welcome. Everyone is welcome here. But for the most part, if you're drawing fashion figures, especially if you're trying to draw design figures, you need to follow those kinds of laws of physical science. <laughs> you just have to. That's what it is. So this figure, okay, this guy... He does have a little twist to his body, really subtle, but just enough to make him look relaxed, not like straight, stiff, up and down. Okay? And so all the angles and curves to his body are really subtle, but you do need to pay attention to them. Otherwise, he will look shoulder, like soldier straight, and you don't really want that. Okay, let's look at this pair. So I don't know exactly these models' heights, but in general, in real life, male models, they average about 5'11 to 6'2. And female models average about 5'8 to 5'11. Of course, there are some outliers like Kate Moss is only 5'6 or so. Trish Goff was about 5'7 or so. Um, but yeah, in general, women are a little bit shorter. But they also wear heels way more often than men do. In this example, the guy, he is wearing like a kind of like a chunky boot with a thick sole. And she's wearing about a three inch stiletto. And she is also standing a little bit behind him. And she's just like a hair shorter than him. She's also leaning. And he's also got a lot of hair on top. <laughs> and so that kind of balances out so that he does end up looking a little bit taller. And so when you do those one sixteenth of an inch, one eighth of an inch, those head proportions they like even out so that she is just a little bit shorter than him like in this photo i like using two colors of mechanical color pencils because when you're drawing the overlapping figures you know even if you have a lineup of six like every other figure can be a different color so that you can keep track of what body part is what and then I started with the two plumb lines, but as you finalize the placement for the second figure, you can draw a new plumb line and move her over as, move that reference point over, excuse me. And yeah, she does look like she's tipping over, but that's fine because she's clearly leaning on him a little bit. She's got her arm on him. If she was standing like that without that guy there, she would totally topple over. And so it's okay that just looking at her figure on the plumb line, she does look a little bit tilted. That's fine. But she's got that figure there. 
And this is something I definitely do when I'm developing figures on my own and my home studio is take a tracing paper, take a piece of tracing paper and tape it to the top of my rough proportions and pose sheet and kind of draw the final figures, you know, cleanly with a dark pencil because I tend to make several Xerox copies of my finalized croquis to use over and over again. When I first started this channel, I started with my four step croquis building process videos and I still use those steps. You know, I, I created the four steps while I was teaching in university to help my students who had no figure drawing experience figure out how to do fashion figures. And you should definitely go check those videos out if you want more information on building fashion figures. But basically, step one is setting up the pose and length proportions, which is what I did with those color pencils. And then step two is setting up the width proportions, kind of like building cylinder blocks, the correct width of the arm, the correct width of the leg, which again, I did with the color pencils. And then step three is adding anatomy, which is what I'm doing now. This is where we decide how muscular we're going to make our figure, how curvy, you know, how big her butt is going to be, how muscular his arms are going to be. I'm looking at this video now. In retrospect, I should have made his shoulders a little bit broader, not because of what I think looks good, but just the guy in the photo, his shoulders are a little bit broader than what I drew him as. But, uh, you know, I don't think he looks terrible. <laughs> and then step four is editing and perfecting. And if I was doing this to make sure that the figures were absolutely perfect, what I would, I would do a couple of things. My favorite thing is to flip my tracing paper over because as you draw, your eye sort of kind of gets used to the errors and they just kind of end up glossing over them because they're just so used to just looking at them. But when you flip it over, it's like looking at a new drawing for the first time and you see the errors right away. And it's even more obvious in a dynamic asymmetrical pose like this one. So that's what I like to do. I like to draw the anatomy out, flip it over. I like to take another colored pencil and then add corrections. And then I'll draw the whole thing clean with corrections and then make Xerox copies of that and keep them in my big file folder of fashion figures to use whenever. And that's it. Those are my tips on how to draw two or more people with varying proportions next to and interacting with each other. And I would love to see you draw some couples, some trios, some dozens, or what have you. Tag me on Instagram, hashtag drawing with Zoe Hong. And uh, let me know how you're putting these principles to use. Again, remember my number one tip is watch your physical overlapping. <laughs> And, um, you know what I'm going to say next, right? Hashtag always be practicing. Hashtag practice, not magic, because we're not made of magic. We're made of practice. Hashtag if your first one sucks, you're right on track. What does that mean? It means you did it. Doing the first one is usually the hardest one, and you did it. So good for you. Now do it again. And last but not least, it's hard because it's hard, not because there's anything wrong with you. Okay. Drawing people is complicated. Drawing fashion figures is like another layer of complication. Drawing people on top of bodies is another complication. It's hard because it's hard. People ask me constantly on my channel, how long have you been drawing? How do I get to draw like that? Is it your pencil? I'm like, oh, it is so not my pencil. <laughs> I like the pencils that I use. It's not the pencil. Okay. Stop obsessing over my supplies. It's about the practice. I have been drawing almost my entire life. It's really about the practice. I promise. I promise. Okay. So get to work. Have fun. Don't forget to have fun. Draw some cool things. Tag me. Show me what you're up to. Share. Subscribe. Drop me your questions. Check the description box for information. And I'll see you in the next video.